All right, we've got another life cycle to draw. This time we are going to draw the life cycle of a member of the Pteridophyta. And the Pteridophyta are um, a representative of the seedless vascular plants. So one of the first great big innovations in plant evolution was getting plumbing, in, internal plumbing. Uh, so having vascular tissue meant that um, you could be a bigger plant because you could move water from the ground up into your stems, so your your and now into your leaves, which meant you could be much bigger. You didn't rely on having being close to the ground and having water right there around you. Um, but just like we didn't have seeds in the mosses, we don't have seeds in our seedless vascular plants. That's our next great innovation. So being seedless is actually a plesiomorphy an ancestral condition, but being vascular is an apomorphy, a derived condition. So seedless vascular plants, um, just on their own, are a grade. They're a paraphyletic group, while the vascular plants altogether, including the seed plants, represent a clade, a, tr a true um, monophyletic group. All right, so the Pteridophyta are the true ferns. And there are some things that we call ferns that aren't really ferns, that are fern-like, uh, including some other closely related phyla, like the horsetail ferns and whisk ferns. But those are in separate phyla. Um, you probably are at least somewhat familiar with what a fern is. Okay, so something we see in the vascular plants is we go from being gametophyte dominant to being sporophyte dominant. And these two things, vascular plus sporophyte dominant, they always go together always go together. And that also means that they are diploid dominant. All right, so um, I'm gonna start off by drawing a sporophyte down here. You might say that's not very exciting just yet, but wait, there's more. All right, so what I'm drawing down here at first are uh, a stem with, now we've got some uh, true roots, some actual vascularized roots. So first of all, this, this thing here, uh, which is typically underground, you might think, oh, that must be the root, but it's not. It's actually called a rhizome, which uh, anatomically is a stem. And these things here, for the first time, are roots. And fern roots are considered to be adventitious, meaning they don't grow where we would necessarily expect them to be because they're growing off of this underground stem rather than just being the only underground tissues that we have, but the roots can draw up water through the tubes, run the water through the tubes that are in the stems and up into the leaves, which you guessed it, also have tubes in them. Okay, so we've got this rhizome that is a stem. Uh, we've got, I'm gonna draw a young frond called a fiddlehead. which is a young leaf 
which expands by a process called circinate vernation. And circinate vernation means, in essence, that uh, it's a spiral, and its growth and development um, will be essentially an elongation of that spiral shape. Kind of like one of those party favor things that you blow into and they make a noise. Um, if they have a name, I don't know what it is. Party blowers, whatever. Anyway, uh, that's that's a fiddlehead, so-called, because it's spiral-shaped. Kind of looks like the scroll on a violin or a fiddle. Okay, so now we're going to put in some a couple of uh, these leaves. And I'm not going to draw them in great detail just yet, because... Uh, we'll do that later on. But what we've got here are these leaves. And the leaf of a fern is called a frond, F-R-O-N-D, um, which has this central axis called a rachis. And it's got these little leaflets that are called penny. And in case you're wondering what's the difference between a leaf and a leaflet, well, a frond in and of itself is an entire leaf. These little things that go off the sides there, those are leaflets. And the difference being there is a, a bud, a meristem, a zone of growth that's at the base of a full frond that we don't find at the base of each individual pinna. Uh, and something you'll learn if you take um, vertebrate biology or physiology or ornithology is that the central axis of a bird feather is called a rachis and the, um, the keratinized projections at the size are called pinules uh, because the there's a lot of similarity between what happens in a bird's feather and uh, a fern frond. Okay, so this is all part of the sporophyte. We'll call that a mature sporophyte. And remembering that the job of the sporophyte, besides just having a whole bunch of diploid cells is to produce new produce spores let's find out what happens there so on one of these pinny oh, zoom in there so we've got a rachis and i'm going to draw there's a pinna on that side and a pinna on that side it's supposed to be the exact same size and symmetrical so good job me for good attempt very bold attempt on my part. Not great, but the point's across, I think. Uh, what we do tend to find on these um, fertile fronds is that once they get to a certain stage in their life, they may have these specialized spots underneath. I'll try and show you a picture. So these spots are called um, sori. So just one sorus. And a sorus is a cluster of spore containing structures called sporangia. We'll zoom in on the sporangium in a little bit here. Um, and if we have more than one sorus, then we've got sori. That's a Latin word. Plural, sori, one sorus. So if we zoom in on a sorus, um, we'd see that there's a cluster of Sporangia. 
And if we zoom in on one of those sporangia, it's gonna kind of look like Um, this reminds me of like, um, if you ever make, take a tennis ball and like gave, cut a mouth into it, make it into a, like a puppet. That's kind of what a sporangium or a spore container looks like. So this here, all of this is the sporangium. Uh, we've got the structure that kind of wraps around it. So that's kind of like the... Imagine your tennis ball puppet had a mohawk. Uh, and that mohawk is called the annulus. And it too, like the peristome teeth in the moss, uh, is hygroscopic. So again, we don't want our plants to release their spores unless it's going to be, a, they're going to have a good time. They're going to have a good chance of succeeding because there's a nice wet spot out there for them to uh, germinate in. Okay, so sporangium is the spore container. Uh, so when it's humid, what's gonna happen is that annulus is going to elongate, straighten out. And what that's going to do to the, oops, that's sporangium, let's write in humidity, elongates, annulus, and it makes the sporangium open wide. Um, and inside of the sporangium, we're going to produce the spores by meiosis. So we're going to release the spores. And the spore is going to grow into, once again, a protonema. And that protonema, oops. More mitosis is going to grow into kind of a, it's always described to me as being kind of heart-shaped. So now we're in haploid land. Now we're in uh, gametophyte land. Okay, so I'm gonna make it clear we're over in haploid land. This thing is called, the heart-shaped thing is called a prothallus, which is a bisexual gametophyte. Okay, and it's gonna have some, like on the gametophyte of the moss, it's going to have some rhizoids to anchor it to the ground. Uh, and then, okay, so we've got our heart-shaped thing up here. We're gonna draw some more of these kind of little, um, These are gonna look, should look sort of familiar to what we saw uh, at the top of our female gametophytes, because those are archegonia. They're found up in the cleft. Archegonia. Uh, and around the edge, we're gonna have some of our sausage shaped things. And these sausage-shaped things are going to be the antheridia. And they're going to do just what they did in the moss life cycle, which is the archegonia are going to contain eggs produced by mitosis. Antheridia are going to uh, contain sperm. 
And this prothallus, this gametophyte, it's, it's very small. Like you would probably never see one and notice it unless you were really, really looking. Um, so once again, if we just add water, Still kind of reliant on water to make our um, fertilization happen. So we're going to have some sperm transfer. And that's going to lead to having Fertilization with the zygote inside that archegonium. And then yeah, it shrank. It's been shrinking because it has been very small all along, but I had to draw it big in order for us to be able to see it, but we're going to start to grow and, oh, that doesn't look like much of anything. Uh, this structure is called a sporling, which I think is an adorable, cute name. Um, so that's the new sporophyte. And that is going to grow. into a new sporophyte, okay? So where is the meiosis? Up here, it's how we make the spores. Where is the fertilization? It's over here. Most of the life of the fern, the thing that you're gonna see if you're out walking around in the woods is gonna be pretty much all sporophyte, all this stuff. Okay, and I'll try and sprinkle some photos in there so you can see what these things really look like when they're not my cheesy cartoon drawings. <laughs>